Welcome to Performer Stuff Pro Series, a collaborative forum where working professionals can share together their knowledge, experience, hopefully a little wisdom, but most importantly, their collective passions for live entertainment. I'm Mark Pawsey, and today I am hosting a roundtable discussion with members from the West End cast of The Comedy About a Bank Robbery, Ashley Tucker, Ross Virgo, and Chris Leesk. Panelists, Hi. welcome. Tell me about risk, because to me, taking risk in theater is so important. When you take risk and uh, go beyond where you feel comfortable, that's when genius comes and that's when magic happens. Um, Ashley, would you agree? Risk uh, too? Yeah, I completely agree with everything you say. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a risk to go out on stage every night, isn't it? You risk a part of, you risk a part of yourself, I think. You take a chance on your own ability, you take a chance on that audience to respond and engage and take a risk on the fact that what you're giving is what they want to see. The whole industry is a risk, I think, but, you know, it's the best job in the world if you can get it, I think. Yeah. Chris? Um, no, I, th I, think it's, I think it's really important. I think, I think, not to make, I think in general it is. I think in comedy, it really is vital um, I think having confidence in your own abilities, but also having no fear of failure are two things which you can't learn. Well, no, you do learn. No one can tell you to do it. And there's no like magic switch on your body somewhere. It's something you learn over time because I hate to scare anyone, but you will, you are going to fail. I think it's a guarantee. And I promise you as well, it's almost certain you're going to fail on stage in front of five to 600 people. That will happen because like in any job, you make mistakes. And it's okay because once you do it, the, scare, the, the, the fear of failure is so much worse than actually the failure itself. And when it happens, you suddenly realize, oh yeah, all we're doing is making faces on stage. <laughs> like, it's not the worst thing in the world. And I think once you get past that failure and are not embarrassed to expose yourself and, uh, and be vulnerable, you will be a better actor, you'll be you're more unique, and uh, you'll make bigger, bolder choices that people will be surprised at how you made them. But you only made them because you weren't scared of embarrassing yourself. And I think that is so important. But also it changes you as an individual, not just as an actor. I think you suddenly just, you feel more relaxed. And you know what? It's really nice to finally like yourself. And that's really important as well. I think inside acting and, and, and outside acting, I'd say. How important is criticism and what do you get from that? Ashley? I think if it's constructive and it comes from, if, if it comes from a outlet that I respect, I think it can be really useful because um, you're not performing in front of a mirror. So you, at a point you do have to sort of rely that you are, you know, in with the, the rest of your performers or the rest of the production or what your director's vision sort of is. I think it can be very unhelpful if you take it Personally, sometimes I think when it comes to reviews and things like that, I don't, I tend not to read them either way, whether they're great or not, because I can't handle it if they're not, if it's, if it happens to be personal or if it, it like, I, I think I just take it as a person. I take it automatically really personally. So I know that that's not useful for me. So I don't use it. But if I'm, if I'm looking for constructive criticism, I know the sources that I can go to that I trust and people who, whose opinion I respect. So it can be a blessing and a curse. I think there's something wonderfully liberating in realizing you're never going to please everyone. But in, in the sense of the work that you do is never going to be to everyone's tastes. And um, I remember uh, getting a note from um, our kind of directors, um, Katie Ann and Kirsty, when we started doing um, bank robberies, that they said sometimes we have people, occasionally not too many, but people will walk out at the interval. And we actually take that as a good thing because it means that our, that we're sticking to one type of performance, we're sticking to one type of comedy, and that's consistent. And it's consistent enough for people to be able to make the decision, oh, this isn't for us, so then they make the choice to excuse themselves from it. I think do what you want with criticism. If, if you want to use it to, to drive you to be better, then do it. If you want to ignore it, I think ignore it. Just don't ever let it get to you. Don't let it, if it controls you, well, if anything controls you, it's wrong. Mm. But I think the only time criticism is a no, if anyone in a review ever questions your appearance, ignore it, they're wrong, 
and they're morons. And I honestly, truly believe that. And I hate to say it, it happens. How does theatre stay relevant in the world today? By reflecting back society at itself, I think. I think. I think. How do I answer that question? Mm -hmm. It's always relevant because I love it. There's nothing wrong with this art form. It's one of the greatest art forms on the planet. I think it, it stays relevant because it, it's representative of types of human life, whether it's, it, it, you know, accelerating that or expanding it or the opposite. I agree with that. I think it's by educating audiences on important issues that the world needs to hear and needs to understand. I think some of my biggest bits of education have been from hearing different voices from different, uh, different backgrounds and learning from that. I think also on the flip side to that, it, I think it's a safe space for audiences to come. Ice cream, ice cream. Ice cream, see you later guys, have a good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> really an ice cream van. Yeah. Ice cream van, mate. Can you hear it still? Look at that. Raspberry ripple, please. I think also on the flip side to that, having a, with comedies and light-hearted shows, I think it's an escapism for audience members. I think you can come in and you might have had the worst day and you might feel really sad in yourself or, or just stuff's going on that is out of your control. You can come in and for two and a half hours, escape that feeling and trust and know that, well, unless it's a bad show, but trust that you can laugh and forget about your life. And that's really nice, I think. Theatre as a kind of an art form, if you define theatre as live storytelling, there has always been, as far as we can historically look, I mean, at least until the ancient uh, Greeks and perhaps even further, we, we know that live storytelling of some form has existed. Um, so I do think there is always a need for that, whether that's one person sharing a story around a campfire, or well, like one like cave person sharing that story around a campfire, or whether it's sharing a... A story to a group of mates at a party or on a bigger picture a group of people getting together to tell a story to a bigger group of people um but i think it, for that to carry on it's important that the groups of people that are sharing stories are are not just the same group and uh, you know i don't mean this to sound like i'm pushing a political agenda or anything like that i just mean i think it's important that you you as an artist engage with as many different stories as possible and then, and then you as an audience member engage with as many different um, stories as possible in lots of different forms. How do you stay your present on stage day in, day out, Ash? How do I stay present? I think having the, my, the hook for the person that I'm playing, knowing what the thing is about them that gets me into character, but also other actors. I mean, that's <laughs> the, even though you are knocking out eight shows a week, everyone is coming at it from a different space every night. And the audience are completely different every night. So that the response I get off of the people that I'm working with, that's what gives me the, the in. I think every show is going to be different naturally because I think our job as an actor is to serve the audience. And there will be some shows where the audience don't find certain gags funny. And I think to ignore them and go, well, this is what we've rehearsed and you're a guest is wrong. That's not our job. We're serving the audience. So I think our jobs, especially in comedy, because you do instantly get that response, is to learn what the audience wants and serve that. And that is, doesn't mean you change the play, but it just, it means you just adapt it slightly and you play with the other actor to find what it is you, how you want to entertain that audience. But also going back that sometimes people are going to go long running show, people are going to come in tired or they're going to come in with a bad throat. And that will naturally affect the way that they perform as well. So it's your job to help them and support them and change what you're doing to serve them. So I think in that way, you can keep it fresh. I, I think I was in quite a fortunate position being an understudy on a mischief show. Um, we were told from the get-go, this will not be um, understudying in the perhaps the more general sense you know people often kind of I think you would think with understudies you'll go on a couple of times if someone's ill or they're on holiday or whatever but because the show is so demanding um because it's a very much an ensemble show you we were always going on and off um I think even in the West End alone I think I, I counted up I went on about 150 times like as a variety of different characters and so that and that alone forces you to kind of stay present and I think you know you, you it's almost like a cliche in acting now that you, you get told to listen um, but I think 
And I think that is the kind of one of the core ways of keeping yourself present. If you're just listening both to the audience, as Chris was saying, but as Ashley said, to the other actors, the other performers, depending on how they are, whether the audience have had a good meal and they're all coming down to watch and it's a Friday night and they're all up for it and they're all, you know, tanked up to the nines or, or whether, you know, you're, you're on the, like the Sunday show after a four show weekend and everyone's going, let's just get through. Let's, you know, let's, let's really muck together, give them a great show. Um, if you're receptive to that and receptive to what's going on, you'll get you doing that act of listening will keep you present and keep you informed and, uh, and keep you energized. So panelists, thank you very much for sharing a small part of yourselves within our Performer Stuff Pro Series and for helping to keep entertainment alive, nourished and full of hope. And for those watching this, please dream big. And while you're dreaming, look out for more Performer Stuff Pro Series coming your way real soon. Ashley, Chris, Ross, thank you very much indeed. Toodle pip everybody.